So, you had nothing else to do on a Friday night but come here? <laughs> like that, Alex. That's like Peter. Where else could we go? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, it's uh, good to see you all here. It's good to see some of you I hadn't seen in a while. I'm not picking on you. I'm really serious. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, I think I was telling Caps when I walked in, it's nice to see bearded faces. Now, that's nothing against guys that are clean-shaven. But I, did, I said it's also nice to look around and see all the tattoos. And if you don't have any ink on your canvas, that's okay. Oh. And uh, Pierce's is fine, too. <laughs> Do you know that Jesus had tattoo and had he was pierced? He wasn't a mamby-pamby pierced, either. His hands and his feet and his side and his crown was pierced for you and I. You want to know about his tattoo? Uh, <clears throat> on his thigh. King of kings, Lord of lords. Yeah. Some of you didn't think about that. It says, written on his thigh. In Revelation, it's king of kings, Lord of lords. Little facts that, you know. And there's some of you that you're like, wow, I like that. Some of you are going like, mm, he stretches my religion. <laughs> Do you have to be with me so long and you still have some of that? <laughs> we'll keep working on it. Hey, I, I get caught off guard once in a while because God will point out, you see, that was very religious, Lonnie, and not in a good way. Because there's good religion too, you know. Just like every one of us are disciplined. You understand that, right? Some of us just have really bad discipline. But do you know that a disciple, the word disciple means to be disciplined? That's amazing. And if we follow and listen to the Lord, he will bring such order into our lives. And when you begin to experience this, especially if you're coming out of a life that was, you know, chaotic, that there was chaos that surrounded you and as a matter of fact it kind of followed you you didn't realize it but you'd take it with you you'd come into a place and it was all chaotic because you brought it there <laughs> but the thing is when you have the prince of peace on the inside of you and then you bring peace into the situation and we have that ability just to and sometimes you don't even have to do or say anything you just need to start releasing Holy Spirit when you walk into a place and you feel that chaotic stuff and just start releasing the light. Because when lightness comes, and I've used this illustration before, the enemy can't resist the Spirit of God. Darkness cannot. It is literally, physically and spiritually impossible for darkness to resist light. Do this little experiment. To prove and see if I'm not telling you the truth. Go into that dark bedroom at night and flip on the light switch and watch the darkness resist the light. It flees, right? You, you need to understand something, though. The light of God is greater than any natural light. That's spiritual. Listen, he created the stars. Look at our own star, the sun. How bright it is. How, how much light. It goes around corners. I mean, it's nice to be in the shade, but there's still light there. Think about that. And how it gives heat, the warmth of life, and brings life and everything. But it's, it's after its creator, because he created it that way. And when you have the sunshine of God inside of you, it's a joy to dispel darkness. 
you don't even you don't have to preach it, you don't have to act anything out. You just let God be God in you. And so what I'm going to do, I think, is because uh, sometimes I just get so carried away and go every which direction, and it's hard for me to stay focused, although I kind of keep to the point sometimes. But we, we, we did some interesting stuff last week, last Friday. Um, and I know I got off on the Lord's Prayer, and I'd like to do, redo that whole thing sometime and finish the whole thing. That would be nice. But uh, talking about, you know, Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. That is an amazing truth. And for us to come to the understanding and know that revelation is a truth. It's just not head knowledge or something that we we believe in our religious mindset or anything else, but it's a, it's a living reality in us because we've given up our life. And that sunshine of God that I was talking about is really actually in us. He has set up his living, taken up his abode. That's when, when the Bible uses that word abiding, it means in a living state. He is living in us. We're to live in him, but greater than that. I mean, it's a great revelation to know who we are in him, but it's, all, it's even greater to know who he is in us. Amen. And if you walk around purposely and willingly releasing God wherever you go, it's an, that's an incredible, I, I can't even say mindset, but it's an incre, incredible state of living to be in that because not only is he giving you the abundant life, you're sharing it just by living. It has been accredited to St. Francis of Assisi, who said this, By all means, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. Um, I think many times people think, some preachers, and I don't do this purpose. I'm just a loud person. I'm kind of fiery. If I ever lose the fire, you know I'm through. So go ahead and bury me. See what grows. I don't know. <laughs> so, somebody told me to keep the fire, and I don't ever lose that passion. But you, you don't have to get loud. You don't have to get extreme. You don't have to have perfect communication skills to share God. Because if he's in you and you just share him, he'll do the rest. Sometimes we think, well, I don't have that talent. It's not about your talent. Besides, if God has given you talent, it's a God-given thing. So why are you tripping on it? He's given it to you for a reason to release, to use. And if you don't use it, then you're going to have to answer to God. Okay, because there's some things that we have that it's a given. You, you know what I'm saying? Now, there's other things that I want to do for God. And that's not actually my talent or my call or anything else. Uh, but I want to do it because I know that in the Scripture it pleases God. Um. Some things I think we're all called to as believers, but, you know, there's things that we have sh in this ministry, we have promoted from the day one that we've started here in Sacramento, and, and now it just continues on. Everyone that comes through this ministry that continues to go out, they do it. Like going out and, and loving on what some would consider the unlovable. You know, going out to the homeless and, and sharing with them and, and getting down right there with them and some people don't want no part of that you know and then they say something like well you know that's your call that's what you're called to excuse me no it was my personal choice and those of you who continue to do it it's your personal choice you hear what I'm saying we choose to do certain things and if people 
And, and, I, and I don't have a problem with anyone that don't want to do it. Just don't tell me, oh, you've got to do it, and I don't. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. You hear what I'm saying? But if we really allow ourselves to get consumed by God, we won't hold nothing back from him. And maybe some of you sitting in that restaurant and, and this nagging voice starts telling you, see that person over there? You need to go say wah, wah, wah to them and say, pa, 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 and do it this way. And you're like, that's weird and that's scary. <laughs> hey, being obedient to God isn't always easy, but it's very rewarding. Scary? Yeah. Sometimes, and sometimes, and I've walked into it dozens of times, challenging God. You know, because I said, "Okay, I've got this gift. How come you haven't stirred it up in me lately?" Boy, was I sorry, <laughs> because I had to go to these two right here and share the dream. I I didn't even know who they were, and I had to go tell them the dream that I had. And it was a scary dream because I didn't understand it, but it was scary to me. And I'm like, God, are you sure they might leave the church? And sure enough, they left the church. <laughs> but it was part of the plan. <laughs> I didn't know it then. I didn't realize we was going to come full circle after, you know, a number of years to be back together again. But it was amazing. Easy? No. Rewarding? Yes. I was thinking just the other day about all many of things in ministry that God how he called me to do things and then would confirm them but he did it in such a way that it was beyond any shadow of doubt that I knew that I knew that I knew that this was God he would say something and make it happen and I'm like sometimes I couldn't even think about it because it was so weird and freaky but you know but after you begin to grow and, and understand the way he is and the things that he... Because he doesn't do it the way we would do it. That's why many times we're hesitant. But we need to come to a place. Not that he has you do anything bad. It's just so against flesh. Is what, that's the point I'm trying to make. But we need to learn that we can trust him. Now, now, let's go back for a second, because if God gives, tells you to say something to somebody uh, and gives you a prophetic word, that's a key for them to open a door so he can come in, okay? So don't candy coat it. Don't try to make it extravagant or smart or fancy or whatever. If he tells you to say purple polka dot bikini, Say purple polka dot bikini. Don't try to figure out why and don't try to explain it. If he says peanut butter is anointed, then you say peanut butter is anointed. Don't add to it. Where you find that in the Bible, Pastor? Oh, come on. Really? God wants to use folks. And we got to get out of our mindset and get on to his wavelength, because it's a spiritual wavelength. Listen, he will never do anything that is contrary to his word. But he will do a lot of things that's contrary to your belief and your thinking. And yet, here's the problem. If your belief system is full of a bunch of religious apples and oranges, it needs to be overturned so that you could really be free and listen and be led by. The Spirit of God. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And you've got to have this abode within you where God dwells to have this. It would be a terrible thing to be one of those who Stand before him and you say, hey, look at all the works I did. I even cast out devils in your name. And he says, who are you? Things that made me go, hmm. Think real hard about that, you know. There's, 
there's some words that I really like, and this is one of them, and I've heard them already. Here's the thing. Most people think that you've got to wait till someday. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And I prayed that every day for, I don't know, 10 years. Anybody know Prophet Larry Huggins? He's a big guy. I'm in a church. He's preaching. And he's a scary guy, too. He reads mail. And um, there was, like, folding chairs in front of me. He just stops what he was saying, starts kicking the chairs out of the way, and comes and looks in my face and goes, Well done, good and faithful servant. I prayed that every day. He says, oh, yeah, you say that a lot, don't you? You ask about that a lot. He goes, well, there, you heard it. You heard it. It's already done. The only thing is, what are you going to do from here till now that makes that well done really well done? And I'm like, whoa. And time just went like, and I was in the presence of the Lord. And there was no, okay, i got to go through all this and go through my life and then someday stand in the presence of God because in Him there's only eternity and there's only right now. And I was standing in His presence and I'm like, wow. So what are you going to do with all your yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows? Because in Him it's just one day. There is no sunrise and sunset. Maybe we won't get to what I was going to say. <laughs> you guys okay? Let's go home early. You want to go home early? Because I'm going to give you something to take with you. There is no sunrise and there is no sunset where he is. He's a timeless God. He watches our sunrise and our sunset. As a matter of fact, in the entire universe, he watches all of that. The only reason that we are in time is so that we can be redeemed. Because everything in eternity is in unchangeable and it doesn't change. He started the clock for the human race so that we could find redemption and come to him again. So that's why we're in time. But when we find him, we come back out of time and we enter in into the timeless God. That's why whosoever believes in me shall never die. Trying to get some freedom to you. Because we struggle with so much. And because we strain at it here, sometimes it makes our days hard. What would you say, Mel? Sometimes we overthink stuff. Yeah, we do. Sometimes we need to get out of our thinker and get into our knower and just know God. And quit trying to figure everything out here. Because, what's one of my favorite sayings? Because in the case of Christ, two heads are not better than one. We need to lose this head so his head is in place. And we hear him and him alone. What did he say? My sheep know me and they hear my voice. Isn't that incredible? To know him. We're talking about knowing him. And then when we get into that place where the Spirit of God and here's the thing about the Spirit, too, because many times when you try to tell people that, they, it sounds like a, a, a slavery to them, you know? That we're giving up everything to do this, and they usually look at it like in a religious term, and that's because it's been promoted as a religion, but it's not a religion at all. It has nothing to do with religion. Let's get this out of the way, because I've got people upset at me before. What are you talking about our religion for? <laughs> I've been in the Catholic Church for 50 years. <laughs> Look, if your religion is helps you and, 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 and keeps you right with God and everything, and it doesn't get in the way of your relationship with God, then by all means keep your religion. 
But if your religion makes you look down your nose at others and judge them and make you think you're better than everybody else, and you walk around with your head in the clouds, you need to find another religion or lose religion altogether or whatever. Just go with Jesus. And to find out if you're with the real Jesus, look for that tattoo on his leg. <laughs> and the piercings. Because he's pierced to this very day. He's pierced. It will forever be a reminder of the redeeming grace of God towards the human race and the love that he showed for us. Now, so if all of it's done in him, and we're not going to change our destiny, isn't it like we're going to make our destiny happen? And the, at what degree do you want to take it to? Because do you want to hold back things? Well, I'm going to give God this much. You know, I used to think like that. Like, I'm going to just kind of like live my life my own way, and I'm going to do my own thing, and I'm going to give God enough to know that I'm secure. In other words... I know he's Savior, but he's just not my Lord yet. In other words, he's not my boss. I'm not obeying him and everything, but he's my Savior. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. So I just want him to, I wanted him to be my Savior and not my boss, my Lord. You understand that? And there's a lot of, that's the level. But the thing is, you're robbing yourself from the abundant life if you're not walking with him, if you're not walking in obedience with God. Is his blood that powerful to save yeah, it is. But we're only, you know, selling ourselves what we call fire insurance. Well, I don't even believe in the fire insur in insurance thing anymore. It's just, that's just a crock. I mean, for preachers to think they're going to win souls by scaring them all out of hell into heaven is ridiculous. Preaching about devil and fire and everything else is the silliest thing I've, you know, as a matter of fact, that has nothing to do with the preaching of the gospel. Condemnation and bringing a message of conviction to rescue human, human life is two totally different things. And here's the thing. If you're going to scare people into heaven, don't you think somebody can scare them back out? <laughs> if you can, it, that applies for everything. If you can trick them in, they, and, and I don't mean this in a bad way, they can be tricked out. Sorry. I had to say, it, that was a pretty nice one, Rhonda. <laughs> Look, that's why when we pray and I ask people to confess and, and repent and raise their hands, I do that with all eyes open and everybody looking around. Because that's the way God is. And what does the scripture say? If you confess me before the brethren, I will confess you before my God and his holy angels. That's what Jesus says. So I don't want to trick anybody in any way. And say, you know, because they say, well, all heads bowed and nobody looking around. If you know that God's talking to you and you want to come to Jesus, just raise your hand. And then after you raise your hand, they tell you, okay, those that raise their hand, come up front. <laughs> That's the way you start your religion? That's why, look, it's no mystery how to come to God. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and that he paid for your sin and God raised him from the dead on the third day, you shall be saved. Saved from what? The curse upon the human race of death, of the grave, and come to God. Because like I was just saying, and you come out of this, this time warp thing here on planet Earth uh, in the finite construct and enter into the spiritual realm, that's why you're not going to wait someday and go into the kingdom. When you accept Jesus, you entered into the kingdom because you invited the king of the domain into your heart, and now you are part of the family, part of the kingdom, part of 
of the brotherhood of God and nobody can snatch you out of His hand. You are in His grips and not even death can take you away from Him. Our God is a powerful God. And if He's got you, ain't nobody can take you away. That's why the Scripture says, If God be for you, who can be against you? See, sometimes you've got to realize that there's attitude in the Scripture. <laughs> Talking about no, 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 nobody. Nobody. No, no, nobody. You don't come into God's neighborhood and then think you're going to take over. It's the best neighborhood to be in, by the way, too. Because it's peaceful. There's life there. There's prosperity there. There's no death, sickness, pain, disease. And the more that we come into that, the more we'll be free of all those things. And to live and walk in the light as He is in the light. It's that simple. And I'll give you grace tonight. And release you at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and the fruit will be continued next week. I got more stuff to say about fruit. Okay. <laughs> communion, uh, uh, as Audrey comes, communion is set tonight. You all have a blessed weekend. And remember, go out and share the love of God. God bless you all. <laughs>